excited when Sigma announced the 56 millimeter 1.4. And when I saw it was gonna be announced, I immediately said, I gotta pre-order this. So I pre-ordered this here in Vietnam and I just got it in. I've been using it for about a week and it's time for my complete review. Hey guys, my name is Mitchell. If you're new to my channel, I make videos about the tech I use, things like cell phones, tablets, cameras and drones. I will have affiliate links down below to where you can buy this Sigma lens or any Sigma lens. And I appreciate it if you guys use it, it supports my channel at no extra cost to you. Now the first thing that I want to address is build quality. And I was really curious if we would see a tangible upgrade in the build quality of the 56 millimeter the same way we did with the 16 millimeter compared to the 30 millimeter. Uh, with the 16 millimeter, we got a improved focus by wire system. We got a added rubber gasket on the back of the lens for more weather sealing. And ultimately it just feels a little bit tighter in regards to the tolerances. And I'm really pleased to announce that with the 56 millimeter, I would say that Sigma has definitely matched the quality of their 16 millimeter. And I don't know if I could say that it is a significant step over the 16, but for its intended purpose, I would say that the Sigma 56 millimeter is a, is a, is a tangible, uh, is a tangible upgrade in all of the areas compared to the 16 millimeter. Something to know since we're talking about construction is the size of this lens. And this thing is really small. It's like small. It's really, really compact. It's really heavy feeling. Um, and it, it feels a lot more solid than the 30 millimeter does. Uh, and overall, if size is something that you care a lot about, the size of this thing is absolutely phenomenal. It's tiny, just like all the other Sigma lenses. We have a similar feeling, similar construction in regards to the lens hood. I would love to see a higher quality lens hood, but at this price point, I can't really ask for much more. While we're on the subject of construction, I will show you guys a couple of examples of the focus by wire system here and a couple of focus pulls. And as you guys can see, uh, it is somewhat better than the 16 millimeter. I am not particularly great at pulling focus, uh, but I was able to nail it a couple of times. Also, you can use these tests to see what the focus breathing is. And it's somewhat minor on this. It's totally usable for video. I've definitely owned lenses that breathed a lot more in regards to the field of view changing with focus. And it's something that for YouTube and the content that I create, it's totally fine. While we're talking about focus, for those that might be curious about the sound or how loud this is, it's absolutely silent during operation. If you're using a shotgun mic on an A6500, you're not gonna hear this, even if it's set really sensitive. Um, the noise or the regards to the sound, it's no more than the 16 millimeter, and it's not an issue for me on the 16 millimeter. So if you're gonna be using this for video, audio coming from this lens, I guess, wouldn't be an issue. Okay, so over here we have a demonstration of the corner sharpness of the 56 millimeter 1.4 from Sigma, and we are looking at it on a uh, three to one uh, reproduction. So this is a 4K monitor and uh, I will have links to the RAWs down below, but here we can see corner sharpness is good at f1.4. It's not exceptional, but when we stop it down to f2, we can see that there is a pretty significant jump in overall sharpness for the writing on the packaging, uh, it does seem to get tangibly uh, sharper uh, and more defined uh, at F2. Bringing it up F2.8, uh, again, it's even sharper at this point at F2.8. I would say it's almost kind of the sweet spot for this lens. And remember, this is corner sharpness. Here it is at F4, uh, F4 it is I don't know if it could get much sharper uh, and it doesn't really change after F4. Here's F5.6 and F6.3. Uh, and there is really no significant change in sharpness. Now for center sharpness, no, center sharpness of this lens is spectacular. And here is a demonstration of that. Again, three to one reproduction, wide open F1.4. 
Very, very good center sharpness. F2. Definitely a tangible difference in sharpness between F1.4 and F2. Not what I would say is significant and unless you're doing humongous prints, I mean, we're looking at this at a three to one reproduction. It's, it's excellent. And it doesn't really get much sharper at F2.8, nor does it get much sharper at F4. Uh, so we can see that the sharpness is quite, quite impressive. Uh, and for video, it would be great as well. Real quick, I'll show you guys some of the images that I shot. And again, most of these will be available for download. Uh, and it's just absolutely phenomenal results with this lens. I'm really pleased with it. Uh, I like the way it renders color. I like the way it uh, blurs the background. I think the bokeh is quite pleasing for it. The sharpness is really corner to corner. corner. The, the sharpness is quite good corner to corner and portraits look fantastic. Uh, and I can't recommend this lens enough. Uh, I will go ahead and let's go back to the desk. Okay, as you guys could see from the sample images, this thing performs great in the corners. It performs great in the center, wide open. It's awesome. It gets even sharper if you stop it down to F2. It, it gets tangibly sharper, but wide open, it's great in the middle. Centers, it's not bad. Uh, it, it's pretty sharp on the centers, um, but once you stop it down, obviously, you do get just fin fantastic sharpness on the corners of it. Uh, I've been using this lens a lot for street photography and like street portraits. It gives you a nice working distance from the subject and the subject isolation with this focal length really allows you to pick someone out of a crowd and isolate them. So. It's great because it's small. If you're using it on an A6500 or an A6300, it's awesome for street photography. And I really think that Sigma is kind of showing what they're going to be bringing APS-C shooters in regards to size, build quality, and optical performance. And I'm really excited to see like a 35 millimeter uh, equivalent lens, like a 20 millimeter f1.4 come out from them. And I'm really excited to see what their next choice of lenses for APS-C E-mount is going to be. That's gonna wrap up this video. If you guys have more questions about living in Vietnam, I'll have a link uh, down here in the end screen to where you can subscribe to my Living Abroad channel. If you want to purchase this lens, I'll go ahead and I will have affiliate links that support my channel. Until next time, guys, it's been Mitchell coming to you from Hanoi, Vietnam. Peace.